Hi, Gary Stearman. It's August 14th. I'm making this for release on Wednesday, August 15th, and we're going to read some very interesting news items out of the Middle East. Yesterday we talked about Egypt. Today I want to talk about Hezbollah. Uh, Hezbollah is, without a doubt, the most uh, widespread and powerful uh, terror group in close proximity to Israel. Uh, and Hezbollah has been arming itself to the teeth. And this is from Arut Sheva, <clears throat> Dateline, uh, the 12th of August. Hezbollah claims rockets can reach all of Israel. That's the headline. And by the way, this uh, headline was uh, uh, broadcast throughout the entire world yesterday, Monday, as I am making this right now. The Hezbollah terror leadership claimed on Monday that its missiles can now reach all of Israeli territory. Well, how many missiles does Hezbollah have? Hezbollah has estimates vary between 40 and 50,000 rockets. That's right. And these rockets are well emplaced in concrete bunkers. They're dug in, they're camouflaged, and they lie along Israel's northern border. Speaking at a ceremony in southern Lebanon, Nabil Kauk announced from a podium that, quote, Hezbollah rockets can reach all Israeli settlements. Now, he's referring to all Israeli uh, cities, uh, large towns, small villages. Uh, this reference by Kauk, who is dep deputy director of Hezbollah's terror activities, included all the territory, including that liberated in the Six-Day War, and uh, those that preceded it. Kauk's leader, Hez Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah, also continues to threaten Israel with annihilation. Uh, we don't know exactly how these, these rockets are armed. Some of them could have poison gas for certain. Some of them could have biological warheads uh, with anthrax and, and other uh, plague-type diseases. But However they are armed, without a doubt, Hezbollah can hit all of Israel, from the northern border all the way down to the Negev. <coughs> Nasrallah uh, has many times threatened Israel with annihilation. And, by the way, Nasrallah lives in a hideout. He is a wanted man. He flees from place to place to avoid detection. And... Uh, only his close, closest advisors know where he is. He reminds you a lot of Osama bin Laden, uh, both in his modus operandi and in his personality and character. Last month, Nasrallah addressed massive halls of supporters uh, in Lebanon who listened as he spoke to the families of those who were killed during the uh, 2006 Second Lebanon War with Israel. His address was heard, as usual, via a video link in the Shahid Hall in Beirut, Lebanon. IDF military uh, intelligence experts have estimated that Hezbollah has stockpiled tens of thousands of missiles in varying ranges, all of which are pointed at various locations in the Jewish state. This week, the Home Front Command is testing Israel's new nationwide text alert system designed to warn citizens about an impending missile attack. A text alert system would be similar to the uh, storm warning on your iPhone uh, or any other kind of a text alert that you might uh, have installed as an app on, on, uh, on a cell phone. So all of Israel can now be text alerted uh, when a, a, an upcoming missile barrage is uh, suspected. And by the way, Israel has a number of bunkers uh, available to the public. So you can flee uh, into those uh, and theoretically there would be some advanced warning through Israeli intelligence. Each day, residents living in various cities within a new area of the country receive a text message alerting them that the Home Front Command is testing this new system together with a numeric code. And the numeric code is issued locally so that there won't be a false alarm. The messages are sent between 8 and 6 every day, transmitted in Hebrew, English, Arabic, and Russian. 
So Israel is very serious about the threat of a rocket attack. <coughs> Meanwhile, in Syria, uh, of course, Hezbollah is supported there quite well. Uh, the prime minister of Syria, or I should I say the former prime minister of Syria, Riyadh Hijab, uh, said uh, that Bashar Assad's government is falling apart and now controls only 30% of the country. Uh, a lot uh, of the, the uh, rebel forces are controlled by Hezbollah, the same group that has its rockets pointed at Israel. He told a news conference in Jordan that the government's spirits were low after struggling for 17 months to crush uh, the revolt against the rule of Bashar al-Assad. Oh, yes, you, you see some amazing things here. There's a quote here from uh, Riyadh Hijab, who was prime minister in Syria and who now says the government's falling apart. He says, Oh, devoted revolutionaries, your revolution has become a model of effort and sacrifice for the sake of freedom and dignity, I assure you from my experience and former position, that the regime is collapsing spiritually and financially as it escalates militarily. And so here's an interesting thing. The ex-prime minister in the uh, Bashar Assad government is now uh, giving a shout out to the revolutionaries saying, your tactics are working. Wow, he expects them to take over in Syria. And what is there to take over in Syria? There are deep water seaports. Uh, there are huge uh, railway systems. There are uh, huge caches of R Russian weapons all across Syria. These could fall into the hands of Hezbollah and other groups. Uh, again, Riyadh Hijab, ex-prime minister, who is, by the way, has fled for his life, ex-prime minister of Syria, has, has said, and I quote, it no longer controls more than 30% of the Syrian territory. So, he says, let the shining revolution be completed by preserving the unity of the country. In other words, he's all for a, uh, a takeover, a, a, a complete takeover of Syria by the revolutionaries. You know, it's kind of fascinating in Psalm 91, and I go all the way back to the year 1991, uh, and you may remember this, the Scud missiles were flying out of Iraq into Israel. And it was rumored that they were tipped with chemical and biological warheads. And so, if you recall, the Israeli citizens at that time were instructed on how to seal their rooms with plastic sheets and duct tape and and many of them got gas masks and they were huddled in their homes as the Scud missiles came from the east and crashed into uh, communities uh, in Israel. And at that time, Psalm 91 became a very, very important psalm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. And of course, that would, could be a reference to disease being spread by air. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flieth by day. Well, if you recall, these verses were read by American troops, and also by Israelis who said, this reminds us of what's happening right now. The arrow that flieth by day, verse 6 says, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. And so uh, both the Israelis and uh, our armed forces uh, in the area, Operation Desert Storm, uh, actually delivered copies of Psalm 91 as an encouragement Psalm 91 to be read, and specifically it talks about missiles. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. And uh, I firmly believe that Psalm 91 is just as appropriate right now as it was back in 1991 
uh, in the days of the Scud missiles and Operation Desert Storm and, and that uh, huge war that, that many of you remember as though it were yesterday, I'm sure. You might want to reread Psalm 91, and I would suggest uh, those in Israel maybe looking at it again and saying, hmm, you know, we have to trust the Lord because we've got 40, 50, 60,000 rockets aimed our direction, and they could come at any time. Hmm. Gary Stearman, we're watching. Hope you're watching too. Keep looking up, everybody.